In this video, I'm going to answer all your questions regarding lazy loading. We'll cover what is lazy loading. We also cover why you should implement lazy loaded pattern and never follow the eagerly loaded pattern. And why is it not just a nice to have, but it's a must have in the modern day websites. Also, we'll see why and what kind of contents you can lazily load and how will it benefit your website? How will it benefit or improve your performance and loading time? And in the end, we will see how to implement lazy loading in Angular 11 from scratch. So stay tuned. Now, before starting the video, I need a favor from you. I need you to click the like button. I need you to smash it. I need you to destroy it. And then you also hit the subscribe button and support this channel. So let's answer the question, what is lazy loading? According to MDN, lazy loading is a strategy to identify resources as non-blocking or non-critical and load these only when needed. It's a way to shorten the length of critical rendering path which translates into reduced page load times. Now that's too complicated for anyone to understand. So I'll explain that to you in simple terms. Let's assume you have a website and that website has about a hundred pages. It has the home page, the dashboard, the about us page, contact us page, etc. Now user visits your website and goes maybe to the home page or the dashboard. The user might never visit the contact us or about us page. But if you're not using lady loaded pattern, what will happen is that the user, when he wants to visit just the dashboard, you're actually downloading the whole website. You will have to wait for each and every page to be downloaded before user can see any page or can start interacting with the website. And that is pretty bad. Let me give you another example. Let's say there's an about us page on a website, which is, let's say, only 10 KBs and your whole website is about 1 MB. So you are requiring a download of 1000 KBs, approximately 1000 KBs or 1 MB. You are, you are requiring the user to download the whole bunch of website in his or her browser when they only need to download the first 10 KBs. Now it sounds pretty obvious that lazy loading is a must have and not a nice to have because you are just downloading things that the user might never visit. Now let's answer the second question that is asked a lot. What are the things that we can lazy load? In my opinion, we should definitely always lazy load images and videos because they are not really critical resources. And by that, what I mean is, let's say you have a video in your website. Do you really need to download the complete video when you load the website? No, right? You, you should wait for the user to click the play button because that video right now is not a critical resource. The user might never see your video. So what you should do is you should wait for a play button to be clicked and only then you start downloading the video or buffering it using streams in API, etc. But we won't go into that. That's more complicated, but you get the idea. Video is non-critical. User might never see it. So wait for the click on the play button, only then download it and don't slow down your website because you need to download a video of 10 MBs before you can show a three paragraph page, which is pretty simple. The next thing you can lazy load is actual pages. Yes, we already discussed it. I'm just giving you a brief overview. Let's say you are on about us page. You have to go to a contact us page. You don't need to download the contact us page when you're on the first page and vice versa. Let's see an example of lazy loading. If you don't know about medium.com, it's, it's a place where you can read and write articles and it's basically a blog post and we, Kritika and I write articles on Medium as well. I'll link to them down in the description below and you can also sign up to our newsletter, link in the description. So in medium.com, we have blogs, we have text and then we also have images, but images are not critical resources. So it doesn't download the image at the first go. It lets loading the website pretty simple and then once the blog is loaded, then it loads the image in the background. As you can see in the screenshot over here, when you first see this page, the Im image is blurred out because actually we haven't downloaded the full image. It's still being downloaded, but whenever it's ready, it will show you. So this is a very simple example of lazy loading images. So let us start with the very basic. Let's create a new Angular app. And the command for that is ng new, and then the name of your module or application. In this case, let's say we want to make a bookstore. And I'll add a routing flag so that we have a nice routing module already created for us and we don't have to spend time with that. And let's say we choose CSS, that's cool. And now I'm just waiting for it to finish and I'll show you the end result. So after about 60 seconds, 
our application is finally ready and this is the app module where our application basically starts from this is the entry point I know technically the entry point is index.js but for simplicity we'll assume that in angular our application starts or bootstraps from the app component now let's say we want to run this application so we know that we can use ng-surf to run our angular application and let's see what happens and this is the angular 11 the latest version that was released and we'll learn how to do lazy loading with angular 11 in the next few minutes okay so looks good let's go to localhost 4200 and that's great we have our angular application up and running now i'll remove everything because we don't really need this and we want it to be lazy loaded and we want to create our own application bookstore in this case and i'll just make two different routes and we'll load them lazily and you will see the difference and the weight that it takes away from the main application so now it's like a blank canvas there's nothing here let's say i want to add a title i'll add h1 and i'll say lazy loaded components and here we'll have three buttons the first one would be store the second one would be orders and let's say the third one is home page perfect we have our three beautiful buttons over here and uh, now what we want to do is if we click on store we want the store page to open below this page same with orders and home page will basically take us back to the current page we are already on so let's add the router links let's say for store i added the route store just to keep things simple for orders i'll add orders and for home page i'll just add a slash which basically means go to the main route and here i'll add the route routed which will basically load these routes whenever they are available so my goal is whenever we click on the store button a new module should be loaded and this module would be lazy loaded and when we click on the orders we should go to orders route a new module would be loaded but this time the module is not lazy loaded it is eagerly loaded so that means it has been already loaded when our app.js or when our application bootstrapped and then the third button is home page which would basically take us back to the same page we are currently on so sounds pretty simple let's go ahead we'll create a new module by this command nggm this is basically the short form for ng generate module you can use that if you want but i'm lazy so i'll go ahead with this after that we need to name our module in this case our module will be store then we need to pass a route and this route basically tells on which URL or on which route should this module be loaded. So just to keep things simple and you can see we have already added a router link on this button. So I'll name it store and then we'll add the parent module. The parent module in this case would be app module and that's it. Let's see what this command does. So this command really makes our life very simple. What it does is I'll reload the folder structure so that yeah now you can see we have the store and in this we have the store module which declares this component etc we have everything we need for a new module it looks pretty similar to the app module structure and if you have only created components till now and used components in your routes this can be a little overwhelming but don't worry i'll break it down and we'll i'll explain you everything so we can see the app routing module and here we can see that it added a route automatically this command that we ran over here in the terminal it did everything for us and it added the route automatically and we can see that it have a special syntax called load children and then whenever we go to that route this store module is being loaded lazily this is the syntax for lazy loading in angular and let me show you the impact over here i'll empty cache and hard reload so that there's no cache and we can see the actual file sizes so the main.js is 11.4 kbs so in non lazy loaded or in eagerly loaded scenarios everything would have been loaded and whenever we go to another page nothing should be there now if i click on store you see a store module was specially called in the network now what does that mean it means that this 6 kbs 
was not downloaded initially in the bundle. And this is the power of lazy loaded websites. Because until and unless the user wants to go to the store route, we are not loading the store module. And this greatly enhances the size of your application and the speed and the performance of your website. Why? Let's say you have a big website with hundreds or thousands of routes. But any of those routes would only be accessible if the user logs in. Now it's pretty obvious. Why? Why would you load 1000 routes when the user haven't even logged in? So what you want to do in that case is you just want to load the auth section of your application, the login, the sign up, the basic ones. And whenever the user logs in, then you load the dashboard. And if the user clicks on something else, then you load that page. And in that scenario, you are not taking the full bandwidth of the internet. You are not slowing down things. You are not loading pages that the user might never visit. You're just loading the pages that the user will visit and this greatly enhances the performance. Now let's create a non-lazy loaded module. In this case, we'll play with the orders module and we'll later on make it lazy loaded. So that even if you have a pre-existing application that you have created without any modules or without any lazy loading, you would be able to convert that and I'll show you step by step how to do that. So now that you have seen how we can lazy load a module, now I'll create an eagerly loaded module. I'll show you the file size change in the app.js and then I will make that eagerly loaded module and I'll convert that into a lazy loaded module so that even if you have an existing Angular application, you can learn how you can convert your existing Angular application into lazy loaded Angular application and we'll see that right now. So now I'll create a regular component, ngGC or ngGenerate component and I'll write orders. Now our orders component is created I just need to probably reload it. Yep, we have it. We have the orders component. And now I'll use the old method. I'll use the non lazy loaded syntax. What I'll do is I'll add a path which says orders and then I will pass the component. So now I'm saying whenever I go to the orders route, I want to load the orders component. Sounds good. Let's save this application, go here and see what happens. We are already on the store route. Let's go to orders. We have the order route. It's working, our application is complete. But wait, I promised you that we'll see the difference in the main.js size. So I'll load this page again and we'll see the exact sizes. So the main.js is 14.2 KBs. But if you go to the orders route, nothing is loaded. Why? Because main.js already loaded the orders page. And if you go to the store route, as we saw already, there's the extra six KBs. So now we are actually wasting the bandwidth because let's say this is the home page, localhost 4200. The user might never visit the orders page, but it's still being loaded in the first load, in the first bootstrapping of our application. And we want to avoid that at any cost. So let's see how to do that. Let's go back in the application and convert this eagerly loaded module into a lazy loaded module. So stay with me. So after clearing the console, we have the orders component and there are many ways to do that, but I'll show you my personal favorite and I think this is the fastest one. What I'll do is I'll create a module. I won't do anything else, just a regular module and I'll name it orders. Now what it does is it creates a module named orders inside the orders folder we already have. So you'll see that in a second. I'll reload it from the disk so that we have the refreshed structure and here we have it we have the orders module. But what we want to do is right now, if I go to the app module, you'll see that orders component is declared over here. Why? Because as I told you, orders component is now the responsibility of the app module to load at bootstrapping. And that is why it adds to the size, but we want to avoid this. We want the orders component to be loaded inside the orders module. So whenever the orders module is requested, this component would be loaded. So I'll declare the orders component here. Now there are a series of steps. The first step is, as you saw, we declared the orders component inside the orders module. Now the second step is to remove it from the declarations of our app module so that it never loads when it bootstraps. So I've saved the application. It is compiled successfully. Let's go here. It says that component orders component it's not part of any ng module or the module has not been imported into your module. Now, what does that mean? 
you saw that we have we have declared the orders component inside the orders module and any guesses why it is not working well the reason is that we haven't linked the app module with this orders module so let's see one way of linking them we can import a module inside here so what we'll do is we'll import the orders module like this and let's go back let's see if it changes anything we have the home page and we have the orders page but still you saw nothing was loaded in the network so basically it's still the same thing the application the main.js is still loading the orders component the same way why because yes we have modularized it this is now a modular structure but this is still not lazy loaded the next thing we want to do is avoid loading like this we want to avoid loading the module inside the app module and rather we want to use the app routing module why because this structure tells angular that this is a lazy loaded module and this route should only be loaded when we visit that page so we'll actually use the same structure over here let's copy this bring it down here I'll remove this one. We don't need this anymore. And in this one, I, we just need to pass the correct route now. So we have orders and we have the orders module. And in the end, this is obviously orders module. Now there's still one very important thing that we haven't done because if we go here and go to the orders page, this won't be loaded. You see in the store module, we have imported the store routing module and there's no routing module yet in the orders so let's create our own routing module we'll say router module dot for child and we can actually pass an array of routes inside what i'll do is to keep things very simple as it was before i'll add a path which is a blank path and i'll add the component that we need to load So that should do the trick. If you go back, you see we are on the orders page. The orders page was loaded and the orders module was loaded as well. And let me refresh the application by removing the cache so that you can see the actual sizes again. So in main.js, it is back to 11.7 KBs. So that is great. We have removed the downloading of orders page whenever we load the application. I'll clear the network for you so that you can witness it yourself. If you go to the orders page, you see the orders module was loaded. It was 4.7 KBs. The same thing when we go to the store page, it was loaded as well. So now our application is 100% lazy loaded. So now you have seen how to not only create a new lazy loaded module in Angular, but you have also seen how to convert an existing component, an existing component which was not even modularized into a module, into a modularized format, and then to load that module lazily. So you have learned a lot today. So that's a wrap. Thank you for watching the full video. I really appreciate it. Let me know in the comments down below if you learned anything new today. Also hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button while you're at it. And see you next time. Bye-bye.